Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're talking Syngonium. Today, I am repotting two Syngonium that I have. One is new, well, new, I've had it quarantined for quite a long time, uh, and now it finally uh, gets to go into its own pot. I always quarantine plants when I bring them home because you never know what's on them. You don't know what pests they've got. You don't know what's in, the, you know, if there's anything in the soil that you need to be worried about. So typically I quarantine for like two weeks, something like that in another room, um, away from other plants, just to be sure that everything's good. This guy has been in quarantine actually quite a lot longer than that. Um, so today he gets his own pot. The other Syngonium that I am repotting is this guy. This is a, um, an illusion species of Syngonium. These guys stay bushier, they don't get as leggy and as long as these guys do. Syngonium potophyllum, there's a lot of different varieties of them. I have never had any issues growing them. They're light tolerant of just about any light conditions that you have. Syngonium are epiphytes, which means that they, in their natural habitats, they grow on other plants and trees. They don't necessarily need um, soil to grow in, uh, so you can mount them on boards on, in spag just like you would a staghorn fern something like that you can do that with them they are aeroids which means that they have aerial roots it's harder to see here i'll show you so you can see those little nodules like right there and along the stems you'll see them all over those are the beginnings of air roots like right right there you see so those will grow roots and then they in nature they will go out to whatever is close to them whether it's a tree trunk or soil whatever and they will grow that way they are a creeping epiphyte so they'll creep along the ground they'll find mediums to grow in and that's how they'll grow they grow in the understory so again that's where their low light um, compatibility comes from they can grow in any pretty much any uh, light conditions. They don't like bright sun. You will burn the leaves if you have them in like that bright hot sun. Mine typically get, uh, they'll get the morning sun. The ones that are in my east facing window, they get the uh, morning sun, beautiful, beautiful sunshine. I have a few here in my kitchen that get the afternoon sun, late afternoon sun, but I'll usually pull my blind and kind of um, tweak it a little bit so it doesn't get those hot hot rays. Syngonium are poisonous so if you have pets or small children around you might want to make sure that they're up and out of reach. Syngonium they like to partially dry out a little bit in between waterings and if you leave them too long you will notice huge wilting so they'll tell you when they're thirsty. They 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 don't hesitate to show when they are really really thirsty but I typically find that if I let it get to that point it will drop leaves if I don't catch that in time. So I try not to, to let it go too long in between waterings. And of course it depends on the um, substrate that you have it in. So today what I am using is a mix that I do on my own. Um, I use um, my favorite potting soil, which is the Pro Mix brand potting soil. And I will also use, so I use equal parts of potting soil, orchid bark and perlite. So along with the perlite and the orchid bark in the mix, I also like to put um, worm castings. So this is what I use. Um, I will put the names of all of these products in the description below for you. What I like about using the orchid bark is the fact that in that is already um, perlite and there is already uh, there's charcoal in there. So what that charcoal does is it filters out impurities and it keeps your soil fresh. It keeps it from smelling. So you don't have to worry about that. It just kind of keeps it nice and clean. So that's always a good thing. So we're going to put a little bit of soil in there. And hopefully you can see me through the whole entire thing. Alright, so we're going to take a peek and I want to get off what I can because a lot of times in the soil from the nurseries it's good soil but they do have and you can see sand in this 
because it's a, it helps make it be a well-draining soil. And you can mix sand in with your with your regular soil too. If you don't have orchid bark or enough perlite and you need it to be a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit better drainage, you can do that. But you'll see that sometimes in this, this one doesn't, but I have come across them where the soil from the nurseries has those little green beads in there. And what those are for is to retain moisture. And I don't like those. I, I don't know, they, they're not great for your plants and I just prefer to not have them. So now I'm not gonna disturb the root system too much on here. You can see there's lots of healthy roots. I'm not seeing anything black or mushy. If that was the case, I would take those off, um, get rid of them. But in this case, it looks pretty good. A lot of times you just kind of need to gently massage to get the to get all of the soil off or as much off as you want. There's one there. It all looks really good. So now I am going to plant that in there and I'm going to be probably hidden here for a bit. I prefer a chunkier soil for my plants. I find that they do really well with um, the chunky mix with the perlite and stuff. They do get really good airflow, but one thing I notice though with doing that is that I have to, um, I have to water a lot more because they dry out a lot quicker because they have a lot better drainage and they have a lot more um, airflow in the pot and in the soil. Especially if you're planting, like in this case, this is um, terracotta. Terracotta will dry out a lot quicker. So when I plant in terracotta, I am mindful that I am gonna end up having to water more than if I put it in a glazed um, ceramic pot or plastic, because obviously those are not porous. They don't allow the, the dirt or the um, air in and they will retain moisture a lot more than terracotta will. So I like terracotta it, because it does wick away the moisture. Your plant is not sitting in that. And there we go. He's really pretty. Now this particular guy, I have to show you. I'm always on the lookout for variegation because I love variegation just like everybody else. Look at that leaf. The modeling on there is absolutely beautiful. And that was actually one thing that drew me to this particular plant um, was, was that. And it's on a few different leaves, so I'm hoping that I can keep it going. So, yeah. And this particular one, um, I believe, is just white butterfly. This is the most popular variety of Syngonium, um, the easiest to find. It's quite beautiful. Um, but when you find those cute little things like that modeling on those leaves, that's something I always look for. So that's why he came home. So now we will move on to this guy. So once this guy is out of the pot, you can see his roots are really good. They're nice, but for some reason he is not doing well in this pot. And I, I just, I don't know, I don't think... No, I don't think he likes it in there. I'm, I'm having a lot of stuff dying. You can see all the little crispies. So I don't know what's going on with him. Typically, these are not um, a hard plant to grow. But however, that being said, I find that the um, Illusion series, they're a little bit more finicky uh, than the other ones. So I don't know why that is, but I have noticed that. Now, I know I just said that Syngoniums do better in terracotta, which is true. Um, but I am going to put this guy in a nursery pot. I'm just going to put him in a nursery pot, and then I'm going to put a cover pot under in this in a, in a cover pot. So this is what he's going to go in. Now, I make these. I'm also an artist. I'm going to um, I'll put my uh, art page, um, Instagram in information in the description below if you want to look at all my other stuff and I do sell these they're very very pretty I love making them but anyway I'm going to be using this as my cover pot and we're going to try 
this guy in the nursery pot. A lot of times if a plant is struggling, um, one of the reasons for that could be that the pot they're in is too big. They will struggle, their roots will struggle if they're in a pot that is too big for them. So as you can see, this one is more proportionate to the size of the root ball on the Syngonium. So I'm gonna put them in here and we're going to see if that is going to help with how he's growing. So, and there we go. So we'll put that in there and there we go, pretty. Okay guys, so here are some of my Syngonium. Um, this one is my Syngonium, this is just a pink, I believe it's called. You can see just the, the lovely way that there's like a blend of the green and the pink on there. I just love these leaves, they're so, so pretty. It's, uh, this must be an illusion um, variety because the leaves are rounder, they don't come to such a long point, and it's more of a bushy um, growth habit. Look at that though, look at the, it's like pink and green together, it's so, so pretty. And then we have this one, this is my pink margarita. This one is more of those long, long um, fox face type leaves, you can see. Um, at first I didn't understand really what that meant, but then I took a closer look and you can just see the ears, right? And the face, that long face. And so now to me, they are, they do look like fox heads, but um, this one is, the, like I said, the margarita and it's so, so pretty. And I do love how the leaves are different colors. You get these, the green and the beautiful, beautiful deep pink um, veining. And then you've got these ones, which are huge too. And they are this really pretty, kind of a, I don't know, they look, in the video, they look more like a greeny pink, but they are, they are more pink, I suppose. That one I think is turning a little bit darker. And there's that one too. This leaf just came in really weird. I don't know what is going on with this one. <laughs> just a weird leaf. First I thought something ate it, but no, that's just how it came in. So there's that. I have this guy who I um, accidentally forgot to water the other day and I came in here and he was completely limp. And because of that, he's lost a few leaves and you can see a crispy one. <laughs> so I have to be really careful of that. So that's what happens if you let them get too thirsty. Another uh, Mary Maria, I believe. It's, that's what and it last is. Last but not least, I cannot forget my Syngonium podophyllum albo variegatum. She is my favorite Syngonium in my whole Syngonium collection. Um, she's gotten really big since I've gotten her. She had about three leaves when I got her. She was just small. She's pushed them out consistently and still is. You can see there's a baby there. There's another one there. It's just constant. It never seems to stop. That one's going to be pretty didn't see that that one had started unfurling. I recently got a full moon leaf from her and uh, this is how it came out. So I'm not sure why it didn't unfurl properly. Maybe lack of chlorophyll and maybe that gives it structure to the leaf. But anyway, it's pretty. I don't know how long it'll last before it starts to really go downhill, but I'll enjoy it until then. But yes, it is such a stunning, stunning plant. I just love it. There we have it. That was um, Syngonium 101. So they are an easy plant to grow. They're not difficult. <laughs> they like all sorts of light, but obviously do better in bright, indirect uh, light. And watering, they like to be partially dry. They don't like to dry out completely. They're great just with your regular humidity. I have not had a problem um, with them just in my regular living conditions. They do well. They're an all round easy plant and they are my favorite species to grow so that's it for this video thanks so much guys for joining me i really appreciate it if you liked the video please go and hit like and subscribe it really helps me uh grow my channel that's it for now and we'll see you on the next one bye